State of Indiana v. Richard Allen. This was filed by Nick McClellan, June 9, 2024, at 11 p.m. This is the state's response to defendant's second motion to dismiss based upon newly discovered, destroyed, and or missing exculpatory or potentially useful evidence. Now comes the state of Indiana by prosecuting attorney Nicholas McClelland and respectfully objects to the defendant's second motion to dismiss based upon newly discovered, destroyed, and or missing exculpatory or potentially useful evidence and would ask the court to deny the same. There is no basis in the law or fact to support the defense's motion and it should be denied. Further, there is no exculpatory evidence and or potentially useful evidence that the state has not turned over or is missing or that the state destroyed. Finally, Brad Holder is not a third party suspect and there is no evidence tying Brad Holder to the murder of the victims in this case. In support of said objection, the state would ask the court to consider the following. That the law is clear. A dismissal of charges due to the state destroying or losing evidence is only permitted when the evidence is materially exculpatory or when the evidence is deemed potentially useful to the defense and destruction of the evidence was done in bad faith. Chisel versus State. 2. The defense have not alleged any example of missing or lost evidence that is materially exculpatory or potentially useful to the case against Richard Allen, nor has the defense cited any example of the state acting in bad faith in destroying any kind of potentially useful evidence. 3. That the exculpatory evidence is defined as evidence that tends to establish a criminal defendant's innocence. State versus Durrett. Evidence is exculpatory if it clears or tends to clear the defendant from alleged fault or guilt. Brown v. State For the destruction of materially exculpatory evidence to support a dismissal, the materially exculpatory evidence must be evidence that possess an exculpatory value that was apparent before the evidence was destroyed and must be of such a state that the defendant would be unable to obtain comparable evidence by other reasonably available means. Chisel versus State. 4. That for evidence to be potentially useful evidence, it must be evidentiary material of which no more can be said then it could have been subjected to tests, the result of which might have exonerated the defendant. Wade v. State, and quoting from Arizona v. Youngblood, To be subject to a dismissal, law enforcement must have destroyed that potentially useful evidence in bad faith. Bad faith is defined as failing to preserve evidence pursuant to a conscious doing of wrong because of a dishonest purpose or moral obliquity, Terry v. State. 5. The defense identify three items of evidence that they allege were destroyed or missing, which supports a dismissal, including Brad Holder's phone extraction, all evidence of Brad Holder's second interview with law enforcement, and a mimicked crime scene image on Brad Holder's social media. They claim that these things are exculpatory or potentially useful and were destroyed by law enforcement in bad faith. 6. In regard to Brad Holder's phone extraction, there is no reliable evidence that the state ever extracted data from Brad Holder's phone. The only support that the state ever possessed Brad Holder's phone is in the May 2, 2024 Brad Holder deposition. The defense in their motion report that Holder indicated that he was, quote, pretty sure he turned his phone over to the police. In addition to saying that he was pretty sure, Holder went on to say, quote, I'm not going to say that positively, but I'm pretty sure they took my phone. They took my son's and my phone, end quote. Deposition page 13. The state believes that Holder is referring to the February 17, 2017, where he and his son were both interviewed at the Delphi Police Department. On at least two occasions in the deposition, Holder states that the police took both his phone and his son's phone while father and son were in the lobby of the police station on the day they were questioned by the police. When asked how he knew the police took Logan's phone, Holder said, 
quote. I'm pretty sure they did it right there in the lobby. I'm pretty sure they took both of our phones. Don't quote me on that because that was a long time ago. End quote. Deposition page 14. However, as documented in re records previously provided in discovery, Indiana State Police Sergeant Brian Bonner collected Logan Holder's phone at Logansport High School on February 14, 2017 at 12.45 p.m. Logan's mother signed the consent to search for him as the parent of Logan. Brad Holder was not present. Sergeant Bunner traveled to Logansport High School and initiated contact with Logan and his mother prior to the victim's bodies being recovered in hopes data on the phone may assist the police in locating the victims. Brad Holder's account of the police taking his phone is unreliable since Logan Holder's phone was seized three days earlier and not, as Holder insisted, contemporaneous with the taking of Brad Holder's phone. Brad Holder never says the police maintained possession of his phone or extracted data from it. The state is aware of no evidence the police extracted data from Brad Holder's phone or ever had possession of it. Therefore, there is no evidence that the police destroyed or lost Brad Holder's phone extraction data, much less did it in bad faith. Further, even if there had been an extraction of Brad Holder's phone that was destroyed or lost by law enforcement, there is no evidence to support the argument that data on Brad Holder's phone constituted potentially useful evidence for the defendant, much less materially exculpatory evidence. Despite the defense's claims that there is no evidence either physical evidence or witness statements that connect Brad Holder to the murders or to the crime scene. There exists no nexus connecting Brad Holder to the crimes. The defense is relying on pure speculation that data on Brad Holder's phone was potentially useful to exculpate the defendant. Seven, in regards to a second interview of Brad Holder done by law enforcement, in his deposition, Brad Holder stated that sometime, he believed maybe a year or two after his first interview, he was interviewed at the Logansport Police Department by two Indiana State Police officers, a man and a woman. The state was unaware of any such interview. In the weeks following the deposition, the state has made efforts to determine if an interview of Brad Holder occurred at the Logansport Police Department. Recently, specifically May 28, 2024, ISP Detective Roland Purdy reported to investigator Steve Mullen that he and Detective Lori Lemler interviewed Brad Holder in the fall of 2017 at the Logansport Police Department. Detective Purdy stated that he had learned that Holder had previously been interviewed and the investigation had ruled him out as a suspect. He said he and Detective Lemler met with Holder to learn more about what Holder knew about Odinism. Detective Purdy said the interview was not recorded nor was a formal report written. There is no support for the argument that evidence related to Brad Holder's interview at the Logansport Police Department was destroyed or lost. Neither is there any evidence that the Holder interview at Logansport Police Department resulted in any potentially useful evidence, much less materially exculpatory evidence. 8. Finally, the defense claim that a key piece of evidence is missing, an image purportedly from Brad Holder's social media that mimics the crime scene. However, the defense not only acknowledge in their motion to dismiss that the image is in their possession, but that they showed it to multiple police officers in depositions, which the officers identified as coming from Brad Holder's social media. Therefore, the defense is arguing that the, so the charges should be dismissed based upon the destruction or loss of evidence the defense currently possesses. There is no case law supporting such an argument. As stated in Chisel v. State, quote, materially exculpatory evidence is that evidence, evidence which possesses an exculpatory value that was apparent before the evidence was destroyed. 
and must be of such a nature that the defendant would be unable to obtain comparable evidence by other reasonably available means. Quoting from California versus Trombetta. 9. That none of this evidence that the defense says is missing and or destroyed is exculpatory evidence for the case against Richard Allen. Brad Holder is not a third-party suspect. There is no evidence that ties him to the murder of the victims in this case. The evidence ties Richard Allen to the murder of the victims in this case. 10. That the state did not destroy or lose evidence purposefully in bad faith. The motion to dismiss is replete with unfounded allegations and distorted and misinterpreted facts. The defense make allegations that are not true and are not supported by any evidence whatsoever. The state's responses to those false allegations are as follows. A. That the fact that Brad Holder gave different answers to how many times he met Abby Williams does not somehow make items A to H exculpatory. B. That there is no evidence to support that the ruin on Brad Holder's hand mimics the sticks found on Abby. Further, there is no evidence to support the facts outlined in the first Frank's motion. C. That no portion of the October 26, 2022 interview of the defendant is missing. The defense has been provided with the entire recording. D. That Lieutenant Jerry Holman did not lie in his August 10, 2023 deposition when he answered the question, was Brad Holder a suspect, with, quote, not really, no. Lieutenant Holman went on to state on the following page that Brad Holder wasn't really a suspect because the police had encountered him through Holder's son, who was a friend of the victims and was interviewed, and the investigation revealed he was at work at the time of the murders. E. That the state has turned over to the defense the Todd Click letter and related reports and interviews after the state became aware that said items had not been previously provided. The state did not intentionally delay in providing the information to the defense, nor did the state intentionally conceal any evidence in this case. F. The state did not attempt to conceal the identity of the Purdue professor, nor does his testimony contradict the testimony of Lieutenant Holman. This professor, Dr. Turco, has stated, under oath, that it is the defense who has mischaracterized his testimony rather than Lieutenant Holman. G. That the state did not intentionally delay providing the extraction data from Liberty German's phone, nor did the state conceal exculpatory evidence from said phone. H. The state did not conceal a report involving documented communication between Carroll County Prosecutor's Office Investigator Steve Mullen and Indiana State Police Trooper Blotcher, nor is the information in the communication in any way exculpatory or even potentially useful. I, that the defense's conclusion that six and a half years after a complex criminal investigation began, officers had different recollections of what other officers believed during the investigation is somehow proof of a conspiracy to conceal officers' actual beliefs is very strange. The state does not know how that would ever be exculpatory or even potentially useful in the prosecution of Richard Allen for murder. J. That Department of Natural Resources Officer Dan Doolin testified that he had prepared a written report of his interview of the defendant but could not locate any evidence that he had recorded his interview of the defendant and therefore believes he did not record it. However, he testified that he prepared his written report very soon after his interview and would have had no reason to destroy the recording. K. That the image that the defense believed is a mimicked crime scene image is not missing. The defense is in possession of the image. L. That Brad Holder is a key third-party suspect is false. Again, there is no evidence tying Brad Holder to the crime. The defense cannot meet its burden to even allege that he is a third-party suspect. 
Wherefore, the state objects to the defendant's motion to dismiss for destruction of exculpatory evidence and would ask the court to deny the same. Respectfully submitted, Nicholas McClelland.